Good morning, everybody. Um, I wanted to post a bit of an introduction to the next module in the Community Risk Reduction course. It doesn't have a module number, but it is a, a module about high-risk audiences. Um, this is one that is, um, I think it's very important. In my career, uh, there I took a course uh, about discovering the road to high-risk audiences, and it changed uh, my whole focus on doing risk reduction. Um, and, and when we talk about getting to know our target populations, I think that this is um, a very important aspect of that. Um, pardon me. Um, when we look at uh, different audiences, you know, many times we're strapped financially, time-wise, personnel-wise. And so if we can look at those populations that are at the highest risk of suffering fire and preventable injury, then um, I think we get a bigger bang for our buck. We're going to be more effective in those areas. Um, several years ago, the United States Fire Administration identified um, four different groups of people that were identified as being at high risk. And there was nothing, there's nothing, um, uh, they're, they're drawing these off of data, off statistics. These are proven facts. So there's, there's nothing here that is, you know, stereotyping or anything like that. But the four groups were the very old, the very young, those that live in poverty, and uh, those with disabilities. Uh, the very young being five and under. Uh, and if you think about our school programs, they usually start focusing about age five. And so if we can work with those younger not just the children, but the families of those children. Um, the very old, uh, as our population has, our older generation, with the whole baby boomer situation now especially, uh, not only are people living older, to be older, that population is, is larger. So, and, and we find that age group in various forms of ability uh, living arrangements, etc. Um, those that live in poverty, I think that that kind of goes without saying. Many times, our statistics show us that those that live in poverty have a lower soci have a lower educational level, are either underemployed or unemployed. Um, they live in substandard housing. Um, many times, and that is a population that just doesn't feel like they have the ability to be safe or that safety is not first and foremost on their minds. And then those with disabilities, whether it's visual disabilities, um, and I hate the word disabilities. Um, it's a, it's, I don't want to call it an impairment. It is, um, you know, a, a difference, but um, visual, hearing, uh, mobility issues. And, and when you start talking about disabilities, even think about our older adult population that has many of those things. So that kind of doubles their chance of being at risk or of experiencing a fire. The same thing is almost true of our younger children in that they have mobility issues and that you know a toddler is not gonna self-rescue uh, in the event of a fire and they do experience a lot of unintentional injuries. So um, those four groups were, were identified. Um, and, and we look, um, kind of come along and there's many other groups that we could look at and you have to look at your own community. Um, cultural groups has become a big, uh, a big factor in many communities, whether it's Hispanic, whether it's Asian, uh, Middle Eastern, all the different populations that we find in our communities now that may not understand about fire, that may not understand um, about stoves. It may not, um, you know, they have different uses for fire. So um, the cultural factor, I think, is huge when we talk about, um, when we talk about risk reduction. Um, and so in this unit, you're going to be looking at those different populations. There's a large portion about homelessness. And that is um, another, um, another one of my I guess, target areas um, that 
people, of course, that are homeless are, are usually living at poverty level. And uh, many times they have, uh, I, in my experiences, people that did not have a home were, um, especially during um, severe weather, cold, cold weather, they be, it became a fire risk. And um, they, they uh, certainly uh, need protection as much as anyone else. And so there's several, there's a couple of articles as well as a very inspiring video about homelessness. Um, there's also some information about senior adults that I've, I think there's a chapter from a book that is online that you can read. Um, the information about children and mobility issues in cultural groups are just some information that I found at, at the USFA and Galileo. The biggest thing that I want you to get out of this unit is to understand these populations. And when I say that, um, you'll understand more when you watch the video about homelessness, the TED Talk. And um, we need to understand where these people are coming from. And we need to meet them where they are and help them the best we can. Um, our risk reduction initiatives and our solutions to their problems may not be suitable for them. Um, I've often said when you take a Hispanic, Hispanic culture and tell them don't burn candles, that ain't happening. It's a cultural issue. It's a cultural um, practice. And so we have to figure out how to enable these individuals to be safe. We have to help those with disabilities determine their best way of exiting or being safe. Uh, we have to help people recognize that no matter what your economic status, you have the right to safety and you can, you control that. And so it's a matter of getting to know people, spending time with these people, with uh, these people, meaning those that are at highest risk. Um, spending, we, we do that okay, what I think with our younger populations, but remember that, that it's not necessarily going to the pre-K, it's talking to the pre-K parents. And so um, this helps us to form our risk reduction initiatives, our risk reduction interventions, and our programs to meet the needs of the people that need it the most. And um, as I've said, we have to get inside that population. We have to find uh, stakeholders within that population that work with that population in order for our work to be effective. And so you'll see a lot on this uh, particular module. Uh, there's, like I say, there's a lot of reading, there's some videos, and you may want to search some, some more yourself. But I would also encourage you to get out into your community and visit those areas where people are gathered uh, to learn more about them. I have learned in my experience that it's not always about being able to speak the language, because the language of the heart um, speaks a lot. And so um, just getting out and being with the people, showing that you care and learning about their needs and their practices in their lives uh, is very important. So that's what this unit is about. And like I said, there's a lot of reading involved. I just want you to get the feel for these different um, groups, what puts them at risk. Some of the statistics amazed me, especially about our homeless people, um, and um, just kind of get a feel for them and how you can incorporate this into your uh, risk reduction initiative. And as always, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to let me know. Thank you so much.